Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standard of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human body is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to help you change your life today or help you change the lives of loved ones, family members, workmates today. If you're dealing with a health challenge you want help with, please give give us a call at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you want to contribute to the conversation or if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you have questions about the longevity formulations or the truth skin health formulations, please call us at 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can buy products right off the website. You can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. Or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our retinol 5% gel made with retinol 5% as well as vitamin C and never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, silicon oil. All the ingredients in our truth treatment products are usable by your skin. They're not there so we can sell you a product. They're there so your skin can look beautiful and healthy and glowing. And it doesn't take very long for you to notice that one or two doses is all you need before you'll notice a difference in your skin with our truth treatment products. You can check it out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we've been talking about fats and their relationship to the skin and their relationship to hormones and their relationship to overall health. Today, I want to talk a little bit about something called ketones. You may have heard of the ketogenic diet. It's all the rage these days in the world of health and nutrition anyway. The ketogenic diet allows the body to derive energy from these special fat-like substances. They're not really fats, I guess. They're derivatives of fats. They're called ketones. And the ketogenic diet, ketogenesis, is producing ketones. The ketogenic diet allows you to produce ketones so your body can burn these high-energy compounds and get fueled from ketones instead of sugar. And this is especially important for folks who are trying to lose weight or who are obese or who have brain health issues. The brain can derive energy from ketones very effectively. And also for cardiovascular health, for people who are dealing with heart disease issues, or just for regular folks who don't want to be dealing with heart disease issues or brain issues or who don't want to get uh, obese or overweight. Ketones are amazingly important, powerful substances for energy. And the way you get your ketones, well, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. How do you get ketones? How do you exploit or leverage the power of the ketogenic diet? But if we're going to understand really how to take advantage of this thing, the ketogenic diet, which, by the way, is a coconut oil diet, or also a palm oil diet, or even a butter diet. In order to understand how to take advantage of these things, butter, coconut oil, palm oil, to get the ketones, we got to talk about a little bit about the dietary fats. We mentioned before that dietary fats come in different sizes. You've got three main sizes. You've got the short ones, the medium ones, and the long ones. The ones we hear about most of the time are the long ones, and those are described as polyunsaturated or monounsaturated, or sometimes saturated. That basically has to do with how stiff they are and how much electrical energy they carry up. A poly, poly means many. A polyunsaturated oil has lots of energy. A monounsaturated oil has 
good amount of energy. Saturated oil has less energy. It's more stable. This is why this is where this is where the problem comes in with oils. Food manufacturers love stability. There's a really interesting relationship between nutritional value and stability. The more nutritional value something has, the more unstable it tends to be. And uh, conversely, a more stable oil doesn't always have the same nutritional value as an unsaturated or an unstable fat, an unstable oil. So food manufacturers are really, really obsessed with stability. They need shelf life. And thus was born stable, unsaturated oils. How do you do that? An unsaturated oil is unstable. How do you stabilize it? Well, they figured out if they pumped a bunch of hydrogen into an unsaturated oil, they could make a state. They could make it stable. That's what Crisco is. It's a hydrogenated oil. They figured out early twenty, early part of the twentieth century that if they pumped hydrogen into vegetable oil using catalysts and high pressure and super industrial processing techniques, they could create a fake unsaturated oil. That's what Crisco is. And so Crisco is a fake lard or a fake butter or a fake coconut oil. And these fake oils have some really interesting properties. For one thing, they're stable. They're very stable to heat. But here's where they here's where Crisco really got the attention of food processors and food manufacturers. It melts and then it hardens really quickly. And when you can get it to melt and then harden really quickly inside of a starch, you could create some really interesting foods. If you look at a starch, like a potato starch or corn starch, under a microscope, you'll see a bunch of little boxes. Starches are made up of little squares, little tiny empty squares. And these empty squares can be filled up with liquid oil. And then when that liquid oil hardens, you get a nice crisp food. That's called a French fry or a potato chips or a potato chip or a corn chip. Or now you have taro chips. You can do it with any starch, really. If you take a starch, you slice it up really thin, and you look at it under a microscope, you'll see a bunch of little boxes. And then if you take that super slim, super, super thin starch and dip it in your liquid fat, your liquid Crisco or liquid artificial fat, and then pull it out, that liquid fat will harden real quickly, and you get yourself a chip. And apparently, when you add salt to that, they become irresistible. Human beings cannot resist salt and fat, especially when they're crispy, and thus was born the snack food industry. And the snack food ind industry to this day is a humongously big industry, and some of the biggest companies in the world are snack food companies. And it all, it's all, uh, it's all uh, was born from, from Crisco, from our newly discovered ability to pump hydrogenated fats into starches. And these, uh, these Crisco-like fats, these margarine-like fats, actually had a reputation for being healthy. Until the 1980s, they were considered responsible, healthy alternatives to butter and to coconut oil. It's hard to imagine now, but I remember growing up, coconut oil was considered a bad food. Coconut oil was considered a food that we wanted to avoid. So Crisco, the whole Crisco craze began in the early 1900s. It turned into the snack food industry. Food processors loved the stuff. Vegetables, by the way, in the early 1900s, vegetables were starting to become real popular as a health food, and at least in terms of marketing. We always knew vegetables were a health food, but marketers caught on that they were a health food, and they started marketing Crisco as a healthy vegetable-derived alternative to, to lard and to butter. Procter & Gamble, who, uh, the, who manufactured Crisco, had a tagline that in the world of advertising, in the world of marketing, is famous to this day. It's a case study for advertising sloganeering. It's vegetable. It's digestible. That was their slogan. And if you study advertising, that's a case study in how slogans were first developed, for sloganeering was first developed at the turn of the 20th century. They also played off on the, uh, the non-lard origins of Crisco. They had a slogan, the Hebrew race has been waiting 4,000 years for Crisco. So it's all about marketing. And uh, it, it really kind of it didn't really catch on though until the fat so-called fat hypothesis, the lipid hypothesis, which which hypothesized that it was fats that caused heart disease. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We are back 
on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. You can also head over to my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase Longevity products off all the sites. And if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team, you can sign up right from the website. Or you can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. If you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth treatment products, Truth Retinol Gel, 5% Retinol Gel, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Balm or Truth Serum, all loaded with vitamin C, none with preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, or anything your skin doesn't use. You can head over to truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or health challenges you or a loved one may be dealing with, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you, and we'll get your calls here in our next segment. Okay, so uh, sales of Crisco began, at the, Crisco was developed in the turn of the 20th century, but didn't really get going in a big way until the 1950s and, and 60s when the medical model in its infinite wisdom espoused this failed fat hypothesis, the so-called lipid hypothesis of heart disease, that it was fat that caused heart disease, excess ingestion of fat that caused heart disease. And by the 1970s, everyone knew absolutely as a fact that it was fat that caused heart disease and heart attacks and, and margarine and I can't believe it's butter type alternatives were, were must-haves for anybody who wanted to be heart healthy. And this real biochemical nonsense continued until the mid-1980s. I remember when I graduated from pharmacy school in 1986, Burger King made a big deal about their french fries being really healthy, or healthier, because they were using vegetable oil. They were frying their, their, uh, their fries in vegetable oil instead of tallow and lard like McDonald's and, and Taco Bell and other fast food joints. And pretty soon, it, w it wasn't very long before McDonald's and Taco Bell and Hardee's and all the other fast food companies started to use vegetable oil instead of tallow because vegetable oil, fried vegetable oil, is considered to be a better fat. Then came the 1990s, and it was starting to become clear that there was something wrong with this lipid hypothesis, but it was still in the mainstream, and it was alternative guys like Dr. Wallach who were beginning to spread the word that the problem wasn't fat. It was the fried fats, and it was the carbs, and it was the sugar. And saturated uh, fats, for like lard and butter, were not the problem, or were not a problem. And then, of course, the mainstream jumped in, as they always do, after the visionaries exposed the silliness. And so the mainstream jumped in, 1990s, or I think it was 93 or 94, Harvard University, folks at Harvard implicated partially hydrogenated trans vegetable oils as the culprit in cardiovascular disease, and that marked the beginning of these hydrogenated fake fats, also known as trans fats. So fast forward to the 21st century, and now hydrogenated fats, trans fats have become verboten, forbidden, but the food industry is always looking for cheap alternatives that can be produced in large quantities and that are stable, and now they got another artificial frankenfat. And you're going to find it in foods like Smart Balance and, and uh, uh, spreads. That's what they call them is butter-like spreads or buttery spreads or sometimes butter spreads. And they'll put on the label no trans fats or they'll say heart healthy. And they'll make big deals out of additives like yogurt or maybe they'll – I've seen one with coconut oil in it. Listen, I'm going to say this as clearly as I can. These are absolutely, positively not good foods. There is no way anybody could remotely say that a processed, or artificially processed, or fried, or exposed to high heat fat in any form has any, any positive value. These are among the worst foods you could possibly eat. They call them, by the way, these new fats, interesterified fats. That's the new term for these franken fats. It's not quite a trans fat, but it's still a highly processed fat. So here's the thing. Oils and fats in their natural form are high energy. These processed fake fats contain much less energy. That's why they're stable. That's why they have a long shelf life. And even worse, this is the worst part of all. This is what you got to know about these fake fats, any fake fat. The body will attempt to use it. See, the body just takes fats and puts it right in cells. Not like carbohydrates and protein that get broken up and stored and processed. Fats get used. And the body will attempt to use fake fats. It will attempt to make cells with fake fats. That means you'll have fake cells. 
if you got plastic fats, and that's what they are, they're synthetic fats like a plastic, you're going to get synthetic plastic cells. And there's no benefit to that, folks. Especially, by the way, if you're deficient in the good fats, which most of us are. Which means, by the way, the more, uh, the more of these fake fats you're eating, if you are eating fake fats, the more natural fats you need, the more essential fatty acids you need, so the body will at least have a source of EFAs and a source of good fats that it can use. If you don't have EFAs, essential fatty acids, if you're not taking your ultimate EFAs on a regular basis, but you're eating french fries and chips and, and, and these spread foods that are made with the fake fats, your body's not going to have a source of good fats to draw from, and it's going to try to make cells out of the fake fats, and that is not a good thing. On the other hand, butter and coconut oil are not only naturally stable fats, they're not only delicious, they're naturally tasty, they're more expensive perhaps, but uh, in addition to being super stable and super tasty, they're healthy, they're good fats, tremendously healthy. Butter has iodine in it, it has sel selenium in it. It has a special fat, which we'll talk about here in the next couple of days, called butyric acid, which is important for the digestive tract. And then uh, has something in it called CLA. You may have heard of this stuff. CLA, conjugated linoleic acid. CLA is a, a wonderful fatty acid that's found in, in green leafy vegetables and in grass-fed dairy and in butter. It has weight loss properties. Coconut oil is a great form of vitamin E, especially a deluxe form of vitamin E called tocotrienols. And best of all, in addition to their wonderful taste, in addition to their vitamin and mineral content, butter and coconut oil and palm oil, which you're starting to see more of these days, contains the short and medium chain fatty acids that are so important for ketogenesis. Why would anybody stay away from these things? They're delicious, they're loaded with nutrients, they're stable, and they have these short chain and medium chain fatty acids, both of which have super, super important and fascinating properties. As far as the MCTs go, the medium chain triglycerides go, these are particularly high energy compounds. The body can use the MCTs quickly, and because they're used quickly, they're not stored. You get all the energy benefits of fat without having to deal with the downside of storage, or if you have fat malabsorption issues, or if you had uh, celiac disease, or Crohn's disease, or you had a gallbladder removed, MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, are much easier for the body to deal with than regular fats. When I worked at uh, pediatrics ICE in the pediatrics ICU unit at uh, University Hospital in Denver, we used to have to use MCT oils for children who had uh, intestinal problems in Colorado, at the University of Colorado Health Sciences Center is one of these regional centers for kids who have uh, digestive problems. The so kids would come from Wyoming and Nebraska and, and uh, Colorado and they'd come in to be treated. And MCT oils were standard issue every day. Kids would get, I, I would load up the trays with MCT oils when I was doing weightlifting back in the day. MCT oils were all the rage for athletes who were looking to take advantage of the energy of fat without having to eat fat. You could take a swig of a bottle of MCTs back then and get, even today, take a swig of MCT fat and get energy quickly and acts like an appetite suppressant too. All right, we'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the Bright Side right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one wants to wean themselves off their meds and get on a supplement program like the one designed by Doc, by Dr. Wallach, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number if you have questions about skin care, skin health issues, skin formulations, ingredients, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have a success story you'd like to share. 844 236 6010 is our number. Got to, we'll get your calls here in just a second. I got this cool study I want to tell you about Diabetes Care, published online February 19th. Plasma, that means blood basically. Branch chain amino acids linked to insulin sensitivity. This is so important for folks who are trying to wean themselves off of sugar. Now, we'll talk about the ketogenic diet tomorrow, or a little bit more about the ketogenic diet tomorrow and how you can use it to wean yourself off of sugar. But 
using protein is one of the all-time great strategies for helping kick the sugar habit, which most of us have. We're hardwired to go for sugar. It's not like we're bad. It's built into our brain. Our reward center is activated by sugar. We have a reward center, a yippee center in the brain, a little part of the brain that goes, yippee, we just got rewarded. It's called the reward center, and it's activated by sugar. It's controlled by hormones, dopamine, perhaps you've heard of that hormone, neurotransmitter, brain hormone, dopamine. This reward center is kicked in by sugar, and we find it irresistible. We love to be rewarded. Our brain is designed to be rewarded, and if something hits that reward center, it's going to be impossible to kick it, kick the habit of it, and that's what sure, that's the problem with sugar. But by eating more protein, particularly branched-chain amino acid-rich protein, that is animal protein, sorry vegetarians, although soy does have some branched-chain amino acids in it, the BCAAs, the branched-chain amino acids, are particularly high, found in particularly high high concentrations in whey protein. If you can eat whey, that's the way. That's the way to go, folks, if you're trying to wean yourself off of sugar. If you don't want to, if you can't do whey, and some people can't, you can get branched chain amino acid supplements. And those can be helpful for helping wean yourself off of sugar. According to this article uh, in Diabetes Care published, um, published last week, plasma or blood uh, branch chain amino acids help improve the body's ability to respond to insulin. That is, help reduce the symptoms of type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Excuse me, type 2 diabetes. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see, we had a couple uh, hangers on from last, uh, last program. Jason in Canada, welcome back. Glad you called back. How you doing, ma'am? Not too bad there, Mr. Bennett. Too bad. Yeah, I just put the sun there with the uh, enlarged adenoids. Yes, and, uh, that's right. Actually, to see a specialist, uh, we don't have an appointment until July the 17th. You so, say he's on uh, a steroid of some kind, as I recall. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Monotazone? Listen, let's, Jason, I, I'm not going to hammer you. I'm going to hammer your doctor. Steroids for children are not good. <laughs> They're a very bad thing. This is not yeah. your fault, sir. This is the doctor's fault, who should know far better than this. Steroids suppress the immune system, okay? That's number one. So your kid, you said he had asthma, as I recall. Is that right? No, no, he just has the enlarged adenoids. Oh, just the enlarged adenoids. That's the only yeah, thing? Uh, well, he oh, has my speech God. impediment. Oh, and, that's uh, right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's and right, that's the right. The therapist mentioned that we should get his adenoids checked out. And we okay. had the x-ray, and sure enough, they're enlarged. Okay, here's the deal, Jason. So his adenoids are part of his lymph system, the whole complex where his tonsils are, right? Yep. Okay. So when, the, when that area gets enlarged, it's going to affect how he breathes. Oh, it's also going to... Right, especially at night. So yep. what their doctors are doing is they're giving you an immune, uh, an anti-inflammatory. That's what the steroid is. It suppresses the inflammation. The problem is it also shuts down his growth. Just look at the package insert, sir. Tell a doctor to. Tell the boneheaded doctor to read the package insert. Why would a doctor prescribe something that's going to suppress a five-year-old's growth? Suppresses muscle development, suppresses bone development. This is not good at all. Now, here's the thing, though, Jason, and I'm not beating you up on this, okay? Oh. I'm not at all beating you up on this. And by the way, my, my computer just crashed, so I, I lost everything here. Uh, uh, Blake, if you could just tell me who the callers are through the headphones, that'd be great. Uh, here's the thing, uh, uh, Jason. Um, the, the adenoids are inflamed or, or swollen because the lymph is toxic. There's stuff getting into the lymph. The lymph is, is the waste control system, the waste management system. The waste management system is getting is filled up because waste is building building up, and that always means almost always means a digestive condition. So you got to know the kid's got a digestive issue, constipation probably, but it could be anything. Does that sound familiar? Well, we watch his stool to see, you know, if he's got, you know, diarrhea or if he's got really hard stool. And he seems to be pretty regular, so. Well, it, you you want to be clo look closely to that because if the adenoids are inflamed, something's getting into the lymph. And unless the kid is injecting crack in the back alley, it's, it's got to be food. <laughs> no, uh, no. You see, it's got to be food. I mean, I'm being silly here, but it's got to be food. There's no other way for the lymph to get toxic. There's no other way for the adenoids to become inflamed. All right? So you got to focus on food and you got to focus on his, you know, he's five years old, so he's not going to be able to complain effectively. And he may have had the problem his whole life, so he may not even know it. So yes, you got to focus has. on, you got to focus on foods. Was he breast? fed? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Does the mom have any food problems? Not that we know of. Like, uh, she has okay. Well, you might want to do some research because sometimes these things are, go under the radar. They're hard to assess. We don't see them. We don't notice them. So, but the adenoids, by definition, almost by definition, cannot become inflamed unless something is getting into the lymph, and that means a food problem. 
All right. Because he's always been a snorer, and, and of course, the, with the language, when he started talking, he had... Well, it could have been happening his whole life. It could have... It yeah, could very likely... That. Yeah, it, he yeah. could have had a digestive thing going on his whole life. Now, when you see, it's when you say that his, uh, his bowel movements are regular and all that, and they're not hard, his stools aren't hard, etc., it's the, the problem is we don't always know what to look for, but because where there's smoke, there's fire. If you uh, if you have smoke, you got to have a fire, right? You can't have smoke without a fire, and if you have uh, the smoke of an inflamed adenoid, you got to have a fire of something getting into the adenoid, which is the lymph. So look for digestive issues. That's the most important thing I can tell you. Secondly, start you just to need to get off of uh, the milk. I say that's always a, that's always a good cho- that's always a good bet for a kids. Big milk drinker, a big that's milk. always a big. You know what? I'm gonna make you a case study, Jason. Get him off the milk and call us back, will you? And let us know what happens. I'm not going to guarantee you it's the milk, but I say it's a good shot. It's a really good possibility, especially if he's a heavy milk drinker. Have him reduce the milk. Now, the steroids, you're going to want to talk to your doctor about weaning him off of those, in my opinion. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but it's just because they're so growth suppressant. They suppress repair, they suppress building, they suppress growth, and this is a kid who's developing. Steroids for kids are not a good thing, especially for something like, a, a, like an inflamed adenoid or, or a swollen lymph gland, which is what that is, swollen lymph, a, a swollen lymph node or lymph, lymph con- concentration of lymph. People uh, use Say, rebounders. This is a good idea that's a great also. idea. And moving the body is awesome for the lymph. Now, kids usually don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, kids don't usually have that issue. They're usually oh. moving. But if he's ingesting foods that are clogging up the lymph, that's where you're going to get an adenoid problem. You know, tonsillectomies are the, the number one surgery in children. And this is the adenoids are part of the whole tonsil system. So this is not uncommon, sir. Not uncommon. Well, and, that we actually give him the, the oodles blend every day. Well, let me tell you some good supplements for the kid. Know. Let me tell you uh, uh, some good supplements for the kid. Probiotics or must have. If he can eat fermented food, kids don't usually like fermented veggies, but if he can eat those, those would be great. If you can find pure uh, organic goat yogurt, that can be helpful too. But okay. you have to be care you have to be careful with that because that is dairy, but you'll have to see. You have to play around with it a little bit. I would okay. eliminate the dairy as soon as possible. Get them on the probiotics, the bioluminitely essence, fermented foods, ultimate EFAs, three capsules a day, two uh, two capsules a day actually be plenty for the kid. Probably and then us have him we got to actually just give him the liquid though. And then give him a maybe a tablespoon of an EFA blend, and then also uh, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Have them sipping on that. Got to take a break, Jason. Got to go. All right? Thanks for your call, man. Appreciate it. Good luck. All right. We'll be back. Uh, If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get your calls when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, let's go to Helen in Canada. Another uh, hanger on from from last program. Thanks for calling back, Helen. What's going on? Well, actually, I had talked to you about my I was diagnosed with AFib and put on a warfarin. Yes, and that's I wanted right. to know whether there was something else that I could oh, do. Oh yes, yeah, so money. But it's sort of a double edged thing because I also have gallstone issues, and yes. so I've been on low fat in the last year, and I know, I know that's not great. Okay, well, they're all connected. The gallbladder is connected to the heart. Did you know that? There's a relationship between bile and the heart, a major oh, relationship, know. actually. I know. Nobody tells you that. You did, probably didn't learn that in nursing school. You're a nurse, right? Right. Yeah, n- nobody talks about these things for some reason. Bile and the heart are intimately connected, intimately related. Major connection between those two systems. Um, so uh, here's the deal. AFib is the heart just the rhythm is thrown off and then the circulation doesn't the blood doesn't circulate as effectively and clots can form and that's why they put you on a blood thinner. Right. Uh, but, but blood thinner the blood clotting cascade the coagulation cascade which I'm sure you know is incredibly tightly regulated. You're never supposed to mess with that system ever. That thing the, the blood is the sacred space. That's why warfarin is one of the most deadly of all drugs. Well known. And the newer ones that they have now are only slightly better. So there's there's lots of ways to do things, lots of ways to take care of the circulatory system here, okay? And I'm, we got to start with the digest, digestive thing because you got a gallbladder issue. So you want to do a food diary and start to eliminate problem foods. That's the first thing you want to do. Also, uh, use pr- uh, uh, probiotics, fermented foods, and digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes are blood thinners, too, by the way, okay? okay. If you use the BioLumin Nightly Essence, you'll get not only probiotics, but you'll also get digestive enzymes with them, in- including a, an enzyme called natto kinase, which you may have heard of, which is also a blood thinner. It's not really a digestive enzyme, but it's a great blood thinning enzyme. Proteolytic enzymes or protein dissolving enzymes in general are blood thinners. You can also use papaya and and pineapple to take advantage of their enzyme content, which are also have blood thinning effects. 
then you're going to want to use natural blood thinners. Vitamin E is an awesome blood thinner. In fact, it's so powerful as a blood thinner that doctors will tell you not to take it after surgery because it's too effective. It'll thin your blood too much. Omega-3 fatty acids are also blood thinners. Then there's the whole notion of why does the blood become thick in the first place? What's causing the blood to become sticky and thick? What's causing the heart to go out of, out of, out of rhythm? And that usually means something is getting into the system through leaky gut. So you want to start patching up the gut using things like noni and aloe. In addition to the aforementioned probiotics, you can also use uh, a, a gelatin or the glucogel caps from Longevity. Uh, let's see what else you can do here. Make sure you're using vitamin C, which is incredibly important for the entire circulatory system. I would be using the Beyond Tangy Tangerine to get your vitamin C. And please get on the Ultimate EFA or EFA Plus or something like that for your essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are important for not just the blood, but they're also important for the bile system, for making sure that you're producing bile. And if you're on a low-fat diet, you're probably, you're probably not helping yourself there. What you should be doing, though, is getting on a low-sugar diet. That means low bread, low pasta, low rice, low carbs. Uh, in fact, you might want to look into the ketogenic diet. Coconut oil can be helpful for you there as well. Uh, let's see, a couple other things. Magnesium is ex extremely important for the heart. So is calcium. In fact, calcium and magnesium work together uh, to keep the heart in rhythm. Uh, the, the amino acid taurine is helpful for not just bile, but it's also helpful for your heart, too. And then last but most certainly not least, practicing slow, deep breathing. Under conditions of hypoxia, low blood oxygen, your blood will become thicker and your heart will not be functioning as effectively. It's going to put a lot more burden on the heart as it tries to deliver oxygen to the tissues. If you want to get on a rebounder, that can also help or doing something to move your circulatory system through physical exertion. In addition to slow, deep breathing, which is also a good way to move the circulation and uh, move the lymphatic system, a rebounder hanging upside down on an inversion device that costs you about 100 bucks or 150 bucks. It's a great way to, to uh, a, a, gr a great way to spend your money. An inversion device. Do you know what those are, Helen? Where you hang upside down? With, no, I with, actually don't. Uh, Google inversion device. Okay. And it's a, you hang upside down, and it's a great way to stimulate the lymph to move the lymphatic system around. Use vegetable juices. Get yourself a Vitamix. Use vegetable juices, uh, copious amounts of them. Make sure you don't have an allergic reaction to them. But the fiber can also be very helpful for bile, helping, uh, helping support the clearance properties of bile. You do know, I'm sure, that bile, in addition to helping you di digest your fats, it's like a waste management system. It helps clear out drugs. It helps clear out excessive hormones. So clearing out your bile can be helpful, and fiber is one of the best ways to do that. In addition to the veggies, you can grind your own flax seeds and make your own flaxseed fiber every day, and then you'll get some vitamin E out of that in addition to some protein, and that can also have benefits for you there, too. Okay? Hope we helped okay, you out. Just, uh, if, yeah, just, go ahead. Just one question. Yes, ma'am. I have been really been limiting the sugar in the last year, and but I have eaten a lot of fruit. Does that That's Oh, yes. Oh, that's sugar big time. There's no real need for fruit. There's no real need. Aside from it being delicious, you know, tasty, there's no real need for it. If you want to do fruit, do the peel. That's the best part. Or go for fruits that have a high peel-to-pulp ratio, more peel than pulp, and that is your berries, small berries. But the problem then is you're going to deal with pesticides, so make sure you're going organic if you go with the, with the small berries. Small berries tend to accumulate pesticides because they're small more efficiently than the big fruits. So... Uh, with berries, while they're more peel to pulp, you do have to deal with the preserve with the uh, uh, the the, uh, uh, the pesticide issue, and that's why you want to go organic, especially with strawberries and blueberries and raspberries, which are the best kinds of fruits to eat, especially for the heart. Okay, there's tons more you could do, okay. but that's a great place for you to start. Thanks so much, Thank Helen. You so much. Appre okay. Appreciate. It. Take care. Have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Pat in Oklahoma. Welcome to the bright side, Pat. What's up? Hey, I, I'm having an issue when I get too warm. My skin starts to sting all over, and I itch uncontrollably. Okay. So the closer we get to summer, the more miserable I become. That's a job for super fat. This is a job for super fats. That sounds like a condition, a fatty acid deficiency condition. Under conditions of uh, EFA deficiency, the skin will become itchy, and, and uh, climatic changes can trigger that. The skin is very sensitive to the climate. This is part of the evolutionary process. We learned, the skin learned, to become 
sensitive to ambient humidity. So when it's, the skin is dry or when the, skin, or when the climate is dry or when the climate is moist, the skin will change. And changes in the ambient humidity can trigger sensitivities to the skin under deficiency conditions. So it sounds like a job for fats and fatty vitamins too. Uh, I'd be using the ultimate EFAs, three capsules three times a day. Also, you want to probably, probably wouldn't be a bad idea to uh, use some fatty vitamins, especially vitamin A and D. Uh, 20,000 IU of vitamin A. Vitamin D, the best place to get vitamin D is from the sun. You can also get it from fish oil. If you're going to supplement with it, use around 5,000 IU a day of the vitamin D. Um, zinc can also be very helpful for the skin, 50 milligrams a day of zinc. Here's the thing about fatty vitamins, essential fatty acids, and also zinc. They're processed by the fat system in the digestive tract. So if you have any fat, uh, fat processing issues, you're going to want to work on those too. Probiotics, good bacteria, fermented food, bile salts, which I forgot to mention for Helen. That could be helpful for Helen, too, if you're listening still. Bile salts, that can help you with your bile system, as well as enzymes. Lecithin, that can also help you absorb your fats. And then uh, you might want to consider patching up the gut if you do have any digestive tract issues. And it's very, very likely, Pat, that you do have some digestive issues if you have this kind of skin sensitivity. So using things like uh, noni or aloe or bone soup, that can also have a, a coating effect on the digestive tract. And then uh, apple cider vinegar after your meals with some digestive enzymes can also help you absorb your fats. The, the uh, digestive enzyme called pancreatin, which you'll get a little bit in the ultimate enzymes, but you can also take extra pancreatin. That can also be helpful for helping you absorb fats. Okay? Okay, super. Thank you. Good deal. And if you want to do something topically, if you're looking to do something topically, use zinc oxide, and you'll have to go to a, a drugstore to get that zinc oxide. Or you can go to truthtreatments.com and get my Omega-6 healing cream. That can also help you. All right, I'm going to motivate here. Pat, thanks for your call. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, take care. All right, let's go to doo -doo -doo, let's go to Julian in Texas. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, Julian? Hi, Ben. Um, hey. met you here in Austin before at Brave New Books. So I'm a oh, distributor. Nice. Oh, nice. Anyway, I heard that I heard Harlan sold the store. That's right. That's a yep, bummer. Sure enough. Do you know Harlan? Well, no, a good guy got it. Oh, yeah. What's he doing? Yeah, Do you know? A good guy got it, though. I don't oh, good know. Guy. Okay. All right, cool. Is it, did they, did, is it the same same deal, same good books out there? Oh, yeah. yeah John, That's a great book bookstore. Got it. Real good. That's yeah. a great bookstore. Brave New Books in Austin. There's a plug, man. That's a great bookstore. One of my favorite bookstores. What's up? How can we help, Julian? Okay. I have a friend, she's, um, you know, um, 65, 105 pounds, but she, you know, she's got, she didn't really care for the taste of Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, I mean, uh, and Beyond OsteoFX, really. Uh, so I was wanting to know about its equivalents for those. Uh, you know, the Beyond, uh, the field. BTT has a tablet for people who don't like the taste, but you know what, yeah. it's not as good. Have her, have her dilute it. And this is true for everybody. I hear this a lot about the BTT, and I don't blame folks. It's really strong, strong tasting. So what you want to do is dilute it. Do smaller amounts. You don't need the full two scoops. I mean, you want to get as much as you can, of course, but if you can't stand the taste, that's not a reason to avoid it entirely. At least yeah. do, do some but dilute it. And we only got 10 seconds here, Julian. I apologize, man. If you want to call back tomorrow, I'll take you first up. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Have an awesome, spectacular day. Bye for now.